Hi, this is Bob Miller of Luxury Cruise Counselors in Alexandria, Virginia. I'm here this evening with Nancy Kinchelow, who is a loyal client of ours and has been a great friend as well. She, Nancy just got back from an extended cruise on Cunard Queen Elizabeth, and she's here to tell us all about it. How are you tonight, Nancy? I'm fine, thanks. Great. So, Nancy, um, what day did you get back from your Cunard cruise? I got back Tuesday night. And how many days were you on this Cunard cruise? 36. 36. That's a long time, Nancy. How was it? It was wonderful. Well, tell me why it was so wonderful. What, where did, first, let's start. Where, where did you all go? This was a round-trip cruise from Los Angeles to New Zealand with stops in Hawaii, um, French Polynesia, and Samoa. Wow. And it went all the way to New Zealand and back. Is that right? That's correct. Wow. How many days did you actually spend in New Zealand? Uh, five. Four. Excuse me. Four days in New Zealand. Okay. Now, what was the highlight for you for the, of the trip? Well, there were a lot of them, but one of, the, one of my favorites was Napier. Napier, and that would be in New Zealand. That's correct. Napier uh, was, most of the town was destroyed by an earthquake in 1931, and so it was rebuilt in the Art Deco style, and it's, I, th I think it's probably the best example of Art Deco that's around today. Now, you have some pictures from Napier with you tonight, don't you? I do. I think um, some of our viewers might be interested in just having a look at and, and seeing some of the Art Deco style. And also, I understand that you had some, some entertainment when you arrived in Napier as well. We did. So what are we looking at here, Nancy? This is um, the National Tobacco Company, which is one of their uh, premier buildings. And you can see the beautiful Art Deco work there. And this is um, the Daily Telegraph, which is another one of their Art Deco buildings. Now the town really plays up this um, era, and they will they came out to the ship with their uh, antique cars and the way they were dressed. There's some more of them. Wow, these look great, Nancy. That looks like a lot of fun. Now, is this something that um, that is typical for all cruise lines that stop in Napier, or is it your sense that this is something that's unique and special for Cunard? I really don't know, but I, I do know I think they have a, a strong tie with uh, the British ship. Right, so they're more inclined possibly to come out for a Cunard line because of the of that connection to the Brits. Is that is that your thought? Uh, probably. Yeah, I I, I I probably share your your sentiment on that as well. So now New Zealand obviously was a highlight for you because you had never been there before. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So what were some of the other highlights for you on this cruise? Um, it, I also loved um, Wellington. Um, there is a wonderful museum there, the Te Papa Museum, and we had an excellent guide. He was a Maori, and uh, he was he was just a fabulous storyteller and historian. Fantastic. So now, um, what was your first stop on the cruise after you, after you left Los Angeles? We stopped in Honolulu. Okay, so Honolulu. How long did it take you to get to Honolulu? It was four or five days. So four or five days straight at sea, is that correct? That's correct. How many total days at sea did you have on this cruise? We probably had over 20. Wow, that's a lot of days at sea. So what did you do to, to, to pass the time on those 20 days at sea? Well, you're never bored on, on Canard. Canard has wonderful um, enrichment lectures. They have fabulous entertainment. They have wonderful eating. Uh, they have a great spa. They have, um, if you want to just sit by the pool and read a book, you can do that too. There's, there's no lack of things to do. So the old adage holds true, uh, do as much or as little as you like on a cruise, is that right? That's correct. So Nancy, I understand that you're a big spa aficionado, so how many <laughs> days did you actually spend in the spa? Uh, six plus. <laughs> six plus days in the spa, my goodness. I'm sure they were glad to have you aboard. So let's talk a little bit about the service on board Cunard. How, how was the service? The service is excellent. The, the crew, 
they just are so friendly and uh, nice, and the service is wonderful. So anything that stood out, especially, how, how was the dining room? Was the dining room staff and, and, the, and the food up to your expectations? It was. Uh, the food is, it's gourmet food, it's beautifully presented, um, a great variety of food. It's a real experience. Fantastic. Now, um, you know, I think a lot of the perception out there about Cunard is that it is a formal cruise line. So did you find that to be the case on Cunard? Was it formal or, or informal, or how would you describe the dress on board? Um, I think Cunard is probably a little more formal than a lot of cruise lines. I think a lot of cruise lines have given up, like, the formal nights, but Cunard still has theirs. Um, and, and I enjoy that. I think it's really nice uh, to dress up and see people dressed up in the evening. Um, I don't remember how many formal nights we have, but we had formal nights and formal nights, and then uh, more casual nights. If you're in a port, you usually have a casual night that evening. Okay, so you weren't dressing up every single night on this cruise? No. Okay, so now what about on those evenings that are formal nights? If guests, um, you know, they for whatever reason don't feel like dressing up, are there are there opportunities for them to enjoy the evening without having to put on a tux or, or a suit and tie or, or gown? Sure, they can go up to the Lido restaurant at the top, which is like a cafeteria-style restaurant, and have a more casual dinner that night if they don't want to dress up for the formal nights. But a lot of people don't really actually dress formally on those nights either. In terms of Cunard itself, you know, Cunard has a, a, a legendary British history, I think. Um, and I was wondering whether you could speak to that and whether Cunard, whether the British uh, lineage of Cunard is evident on board, and if so, how? Um, one of the things that, that I like so much about Cunard is its Britishness, if that's a word. Um, the staff, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a certain aura about them. The, uh, um, you know, they're so polite and and um, it, they're so interested in service and all that. And of course, one of the things that I really like is the afternoon tea. It's very British, and Canard does a wonderful afternoon tea. The well, it couldn't be British without having an afternoon tea, so tell us a little bit more about that. One of the things that always amazes me about the afternoon tea is that the, the waiters bring the pots of tea around and pour it in your cup, and it is piping hot. There's no tea bag. It's brewed to perfection. And then, of course, they have wonderful little sandwiches and um, pastries and scones with clotted cream. Wow, that sounds terrific. So, um, where exactly is the high tea held? It's not held in the dining room, I understand. No, it's held in the Queen's room. And the Queen's room would be what? It's a big sort of multi-purpose room. It's where they have the dancing in the evening. Uh, it has tables and chairs. You can just sit around there in the daytime if you want to, like, and read. They uh, have a lot of music in there during the day. They also have it during, uh, during tea. They have, might have a harvest or a, a small trio or something like that. Well, that sounds great. I know that I've been on other cruise lines that have had tea, and it's, it's certainly an enjoyable aspect, and I think every cruise line does it a little bit differently. In terms of white glove service, you know, I think Cunard has, a, has kind of a, one of their claims to fame is white glove service, and I was wondering if you could speak to that and what exactly that means for you. Well, they, some of them do go around with white gloves, particularly the, the waiters that serve tea. One of the other things about the white glove service is that you can have your luggage sent from your home, they pick it right up at your house and deliver it right to your room on the ship and then pick it up from your room on the ship and, and deliver it to your house later. Talk about convenience, that's certainly nice. Now, um, Nancy, I understand that this was a monumental cruise for you because while en route to New Zealand and back, you actually earned your diamond pin. So what exactly does that mean? It means that I have cruised 150 days with Canard. And what does that get you? Anything special? It does. It gets you um, an extra party or two with the captain and the crew. It gets you a lot of internet time, which is important on a ship when you're away from your family for a long period of time. Um, it gets you a percentage off of your um, laundry on board. 
and uh, you can get meals in some of the specialty restaurants that are on board. Well, that sounds lovely. Now, in terms of assigned dining versus open dining, um, I understand that uh, in the stateroom that you were booked, you actually had an assigned dining table. Is that correct? How does the dining work in that respect? You do. Some of the top levels, uh, it's more open. But uh, the majority of Canard is done on a signed dining room, and you have the same people every night that you eat with, and it, it just becomes like a family. I, real, I really like that type of dining because, you know, you're, you just go in and you know that your friends will be there that evening. Yeah, and I would assume that you would really get to know them on a 36-day cruise. <laughs> you do. So hopefully you like them, right? <laughs> hopefully, yes. And I had, I had the greatest group this time at my table. Yeah, you said you had an interesting mix of, of people. We did, yes. That, that's fantastic. Um, tell us about, a little bit about the hardware on the ship. What was the most, the most um, your favorite features about the Cunard uh, Queen Elizabeth? Oh, that would be hard to say, but it's, just, it's absolutely a gorgeous ship. It has uh, beautiful um, woodwork, um, the carpeting is, is lovely, and, and it will be the same, maybe the same design, but different colors and different areas, so you, you sort of know where you are <laughs> after a while. Uh, one of my favorite features is the library. It's a two-story library with a circular staircase and just gorgeous bookshelves in there. Um, there's a beautiful area where the shops are with this um, double staircase going up to it. It is a truly gorgeous ship. If you had to name one or two experiences on, on this 36-day cruise, it really stood out as something that, you know, most memorable, most enjoyable, what would those one or two things be? Oh, it would be hard to pick, but I think... Um, as you know, some of the islands were rather primitive, and, and you just drive along um, these roads and, and this open bus, and, and you're right there on the ocean, and uh, it's, it's, it's just gorgeous and, you know, an, an unusual experience. Well, it sounds fantastic. I understand that you already have your eye on another cruise um, next year that is doing a similar but not identical itinerary. Well, I would certainly—I don't know that I'll be going on it, but I certainly would recommend it. One of our table mates has already signed up for it. Um, this is actually two cruises that that Canard has put together. One you can leave from uh, San Francisco and go to uh, Sydney, and uh, that's on the Queen Elizabeth, I believe. Then there are three days in Sydney, and then you can change over to the um, Queen Victoria and go back to San Francisco. And what this does um, is gives you a lot more time in, in New Zealand than, than what we had. I think it's three or four more days in New Zealand. Um, but the beauty of, of this is that you, you don't have that long flight. And um, I think most of the people that I talked to on this, this cruise took this cruise for that reason. We went to New Zealand and back with no jet lag, and um, so I, I think this trip next year, I, I would highly recommend it. It sounds fabulous. And the other thing, you mentioned jet lag, but also I think just the adjustment to the time difference. I, New Zealand, uh, I believe, is 12 hours different, and uh, Australia is 14 hours different, depending on, on how you look at it. But um, the time difference is significant, so I would think that doing the gradual adjustment as you're sailing across the Pacific Ocean makes it that much easier so that you don't have that, that jet lag when you actually arrive and you can really enjoy and hit the ground running. It really does, and you're right. You can enjoy it from the get-go. Yeah, that sounds fabulous. It sounds like you had a terrific trip. So thank you so much for coming and telling us all about it. Thank you. All right. This is Bob Miller. Um, please give Luxury Cruise Counselors a call if you're interested in speaking more about the Cunard trip that Nancy just talked about, that's sailing San Francisco to Sydney and then returning back to San Francisco. You can find us on the web at www.yourcruisesource.com.